I've pondered and procrastinated for quite a while now and attempt to figure out some clever way of showing the process of building what will eventually be our home on wheels. I didn't want this to be a tutorial or a how-to or even a depiction of a typical expedition build. So this is not a guide nor a learning experience, it's just me and what it took for a regular dude to turn this typical American SUV into a vehicle tailor fit to our family and our adventure through South America. Before we dive into the whole build, let me lay some groundwork for context. Over the last few months, we've become pretty good friends with the owners, Michael and Kelsey. They were nice enough to offer up their shop for the build as we needed it, so a bulk of this work was done at the Wonderlust compound. The build was a consorted effort by so many people, and I'm going to do my best to make sure we give credit to all who pitched in. It was super humbling to see how generous our community was in this process. So to everyone who helped us turn wrenches, lay wire, and offer advice, Thank you! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm so stoked I'm about to lose my mind because it's build day! But let me tell you what we're going to do. We've already got the ghost wrap, the matte white uh, vinyl wrap on to protect the paint a little bit, give it a little bit different look. That's enough about the vinyl wrap. What else are we doing? We're doing suspension. We've got the BP-51 suspension, the delete kit from Southern Style Off-Road. We have timber and bump stops that we're going to be doing. We've got, well, we've got the Falcon tires on there already, which is pretty epic. Falcon! Yep, we've got the AT3Ws on there, and we're rolling strong with those, and we love them. Awesome tires. We've got armor from Southern Style Off-Road. we got front and rear bumpers, fully decked out, light bars, swing outs, all kinds of stuff. Um, we also have Southern Style Off-Road sliders and rack. We're doing a 33 gallon auxiliary fuel tank from Cruiser Brothers. We also have um, electrical. We've got uh, Switch Pros is doing our uh, switch system as well as excess power is doing our batteries for both the GX and the trailer. Orange Box Fabrication has the molly panels in the rear that we have installed there. You may or may not be able to see them. We're doing a Wii Boost system, which is a cell phone booster. It's going to come in very handy when we're out way out and don't have service to boost that signal a little bit so we can keep in touch with you guys over social media, right? Mm -hmm. But first, let's dive into those bumpers. We're here at One Less Overland, and in the background we got Michael. Say hey, Mike. Hey. And Jake is somewhere meandering over here, and uh, they're our home for the day, and actually half of the Wonderless crew. So they're uh, giving a helping hand, and we're gonna tear into this baby. Say hi, Tank. What's up? This is, this is, he wouldn't call himself this, but he's my Overland mentor. I've argued with this guy and I've debated him and every single time I do, I'm wrong. So I've stopped doing that and I just started listening to his advice. So he came to help out and so stoked. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we got the bumper on. I'm a fit and finish guy. Like, everything has to be to the gnat's ass, otherwise it bothers me. No. And can't have it too close to the body because there needs to be some room to flex, but there's that fine line between, you know, having it close enough to the body that it looks good, but far enough away that you're gonna, you know, keep any damage happening from the actual car itself. So, 
one of those things. I'm gonna get some rubber trim and clean it up a little bit. That way it looks all nice and tucked. But uh, that's about it for issues. Everything's gone together pretty easily and straightforward. We're missing some of the instructions, but what are you gonna do? Uh, we figured it out, and so we're gonna continue on and try to get this bumper put on. So. Major, major fitment issues. We're now on the probably fourth time that we've tried to put this bumper on and we just can't get it lined up. And the, the body lines are huge. It's just not line, lining up the way it's supposed to. So I'm talking to Kevin from Southern Cell Off-Road to see if we can get it rectified. Just kind of frustrating, especially after waiting so long to put these on, so. Well, actually, we're trying to get it to work. Not sure, but uh, we'll see. All right, day number two. Uh, I'm exhausted. It was a long day yesterday. We were here till um, probably about 8:30, trying to get the front bumper to fit. The rear went in pretty well. Um, There's a lot of pieces and moving parts to it, but we got it taken care of. Um, however, when we dove into the front bumper, it was a little more difficult, and we couldn't get it to line up the way we wanted it to. The adjustment holes didn't give us quite the adjustment that we needed to move the bumper into position. I'm going to auger out these flanges you see here to give us a little bit more adjustment and then we'll see if that takes care of the issue. So anyways, tank just showed up and uh, we're going to, I guess, dive into this and see if we can get it to uh, line up a little bit better. Okay, so, sad face. It's not lining up right. <clears throat> the um, crash bumper was slightly dented. To be honest, I think we're fighting two issues. I think the bumper's a little bit too wide. Um, it's also not quite even. It sits lower in the front than it does in the back, and we need to go up a little bit. Now, I'm gonna try to auger out the holes in the bumper itself to see if I can get the fit a little bit better. Huge shout out to Southern Style because it's his Sunday and that was him that just texted me. Awesome, stand up business, I'd stand behind you um, even though we're having issues with it. Um, some of them might <laughs> be your guys' fault, some of them might not, but anyways, well I'm going to take that call because that's probably Kevin and see if we can get this thing resolved. So awesome conversation with Kevin, great guy and he said we'll take care of you one way or another so right now we just got to determine what's going on and why it's not fitting the way it is so um, we won't really know till tomorrow what's going on with it because I got to take some measurements so I think in the meantime I'm gonna auger out those holes preemptively just to if we have to make it work just to get it as close as we can so a little disheartening I'll be honest um, but we'll get it we'll get it there so let's dive back into it Okay, we got the bumper on and it's lined up, I would say adequately. There's still a pretty large gap side to side, so it almost feels like the bumper's too wide. But I augured out the holes as much as I possibly could and we got enough adjustment to kind of get the bumper up and at least fit it to where it looks decent and it's even on both sides. So yeah, it went on, it's there, it's good, it's generally clean, so I guess that's all I can ask for. That was uh, almost a whole day uh, issue trying to get that fit up there but we got it and so we've got lots more to do suspension electrical uh, rack awning all kinds of stuff so to be continued yeah. 
I guess I look at every build as an opportunity to familiarize myself with the vehicle. Our family will not only be out of the country, but also at times off the beaten track, so being able to diagnose and repair issues with our vehicle I felt like was a necessity. Another huge thanks to Southern Style Off-Road, we were never able to figure out exactly what the issue with the front bumper was, but at the risk of sounding a bit like a commercial, I would definitely stand behind and recommend them to anybody looking for solid upgrades. Next on the ever-growing list of modifications was to address the thousands of miles of rough roads we'd be facing on our journey and upgrade the suspension for a slightly more comfortable ride. Okay, so we're in phase two of our build, which is suspension. So, got the bumpers on, totally happy with them. Quality is amazing. The way it functions, the engineering behind it is awesome. And now suspension. So what are we doing for suspension? We're doing the BP-51s with Timbrin bump stops. We've got a Southern Style Off-Road uh, rear delete kit for the airbags and a partridge in a pear tree. So we're gonna dive into the rear and uh, that's my favorite place to be anyways. Okay, I got everything on the passenger side removed and complete tightened down and I am interested to see how this thing sits, so check it out. Front will come tomorrow, didn't have time today, and uh, we still need to get the delta joints for the upper control arm. So that'll all happen tomorrow, and then we'll dig into the front for now. We're off to the races, my friends. I can't wait to get the front on just to see where this thing sits, but for right now, the rear's done, the day's done, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace! All right, guys, today we're back at Wonderlust Overland and we're going to attempt to put the front suspension on. I'm not sure if I have enough time to do it, but we're going to start with the delta joints for the Icon uh, upper control arms. And uh, we're going to get those uniballs pulled out and the delta joints pressed in. And then we're going to see how much time we have and hopefully we'll get that BP-51 front suspension on. So let's dive into it. <laughs> We're done. Got the front suspension on. And next phase is electrical. We've got the snorkel to put on as well. So lots to do still, lots to do. Until next time, see you guys later. I'd never tried to build a vehicle all at once before, and I guess I still feel like the benefits outweigh the headache of the workload, but we'd just spent five days doing a three-day job, and as the list of things to do seemed to grow and the days to complete it were dwindling down. We dove into what would turn out to be the most arduous part of this build. All right, it's day number five, six of the build, and we're back here for our electrical day. We're gonna s install as much as we can this weekend, um, and hopefully we can get it all done, but there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of installation to go along with uh, all the wiring we have to do as well. So the main things we wanna get taken care of today are the dual battery system. Um, excess power provided us uh, two batteries for the GX, so we're gonna put that in. Switch Pro's got us a Switch Pro's 9100, which is um, pretty badass. We got all kinds of things that we're trying to get it installed today. So, uh, without further ado, let's dig into all this mess. Boom. We 
got a lot of the wiring done, not completed, but you know, that's the nature of the beast. We're making good headway. So I think I'm gonna try to complete this tomorrow and next week. That was a long day and I'm uh, appreciative of Daniel's help. Um, it's been pretty humbling just to see everybody who's willing to throw in a couple hours of their time and, and uh, turn some wrenches for me. But uh, we'll see you guys when we do the rest of the wiring. Boom, see you guys. Do I look tired? <clears throat> I am tired. This electrical project is way crazier than I ever thought it would be. Wiring this truck has been probably the biggest project that we've tackled so far. It's taken me like four days and I'm still not done and I've been working on it pretty solid. So it's a task wiring all this to make sure everything works together and you know we're, we're taking the best path and making sure it looks clean. It's just a lot of work so Built not bought, right? <laughs> Bobby and um, Dan have both uh, pitched in and, and uh, put in a lot of hours helping me try to get this all figured out and um, wired right. And uh, I was up until midnight getting all the uh, sound deadening in, doors and floor and all that stuff. So, anyways, uh, sorry for the lame update because I'm super tired, but that's what we're doing today. And here I. Slow. This was probably the biggest job of the whole build was wiring this up and uh, I've had several people working with me and one of whom is my good friend Bobby. Say hi Bobby. Hi Bobby. I had no idea what I'd gotten myself into. So as the forecasted finish line moved further out we migrated first to my house then to Duck Monster Garage to good friend and wiring guru Bobby to help finish out and decipher the maze of wire we were trying to wind our way through. So we're at Duck Monster Garage, and we are trying to finish up the wiring that I've been working on for five days straight now. So hopefully, today, we're gonna be testing out the lights, the compressor, and everything, all the other accessories. So that's what we're doing here. Probably gonna pull a late one. And uh, we got Bobby back here helping us, and uh, Matt for moral support. Yay! That's what I do. Okay, electrical is done, done, finally done, and I'm so glad because that was a ton of work. Thanks to uh, Dan and Bobby for putting in some long hours. That was a way bigger project than I think any of us had anticipated. So, super happy with the way it turned out. But now, my buddy Koi's on his way over here to help me install the snorkel today. And what do you say we drill some holes in some body panels? It was time for the final piece of the puzzle, and one of the most important missing elements, the long-range fuel tank courtesy of Cruiser Brothers. One of the biggest downfalls of the GX was the range we had due to poor fuel capacity, and we were about to remedy this with 33 gallons of liquid go, for which we'll 
hopefully be seeing ranges of up to 500 miles. All right, good morning, everybody. We're uh, dwindling down in modifications for the GX470, and Cruiser Brothers provided us a fuel tank from LRA. It's uh, 33 gallons of extra fuel, so that'll more than double our fuel capacity and the distance we can make in our journeys. So what do you say we try to get this tank stuffed up in the rear end and uh, see what we got to work with? Okay, so there's instruction for the tank that said it doesn't work with aftermarket bumpers and we're realizing the reason why is because they all use the same holes. So essentially, if you're going to install this and you have an aftermarket bumper, you pretty much have to remove the whole bumper to get the tank on. Because it looks like right now that the tank goes on first and then everything bolts up over the top of it. So that makes for probably double the work that we were thought it was going to be, but that's, I guess, the only way to do it. So, it's always something. <laughs> we thought this was going to be like an easy three, four hour job, but I guess here goes the rear bumper. Okay, it's done. Uh, bumper's back up and mounted. Tank is in, installed. Don't know if it works yet because we got to fill up to uh, see if it works, but um, battle wounds on the side and uh, we're good. We're out, we're gonna go get some dinner. Peace. In hindsight, I'm glad we were a little naive in this process because if I'd known how much work it was going to be, I might not have gotten started in the first place. But with the fuel tank installed and the last element of our build complete, it was now time to enjoy the fruits of all our hard work and take the GX470 to the trails. For those of you that were disappointed that I didn't do a comprehensive walkthrough of everything we did and why, stay tuned, we'll do a follow-up video where I address all the details. And for those of you that helped with this build process, we can't thank you enough. This will quite literally be our home for six months as we travel through South America on our journey of a lifetime and the support from the Pacific Northwest community has been truly humbling. We can't thank you enough and can't wait to share our journey with you. Oh.